Yes, welcome to Home Studio Q&A here on Studio Live today for another week. This is our show all about recording in the home and mobile studio. My name is Pete and this is Studio Live today. My goal here is to help you create, record and release your best music. We do that through tips, tricks, tutorial videos and live shows just like this one. If that's your bag and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do so. We also have a podcast version for those who like to listen in and don't want to have to look at this mug for uh, nearly an hour every week. And you can get that one on any of your favorite podcasting platforms. Just search Home Studio Q&A. That's the and with the ampersand, the and symbol. <laughs> uh, I hope you are doing well. We've got a lot to get through today. A heap of questions here that have come in during the week and because we're live here on YouTube and Facebook. If you do have your own question, all you need to do is put the word question in front of your comment. That way it'll stand out for me. If you put it in caps, I'll, I'll give you permission to use all caps just for this. I know all caps are usually rude, but use all caps for your word question. That way I'll be able to spot it here in the chat and we'll be able to circle back and answer any questions that the folks have here live. And as I said, we've also got some questions that have come in through the week. But as we do every week here on the show, we have a feature topic. So let's dive into our feature topic, shall we? And uh, get cracker lacking. So, Gear hacks. I know you put the the word hacks on the end of any word or any phrase and people are like, oh, yeah, life hacks and blah hacks and, yeah, everyone wants to hack things. But I couldn't think of any other way to put these. And these are just a bunch of little things that I use or that I do or that I recommend that I've, I've not shared before. And uh, they weren't really worthy of like a whole video, but there's some good tidbits in here that I actually did want to share with the community here today. So I thought I would throw them all together and put them here in one video. So let's crack on. Number one gear hack, and this is one that I have done a bunch of times. When I was a poor, struggling student back in the day, uh, this is something I did all the time. I didn't actually own a pop filter. Now, what is a pop filter? Well, a pop filter is either a little fuzzy thing like this that goes over your microphone, or it's the nice round pop filters that you see that you put in front of your microphone that you attach to your mic stand. Now, yeah, they're only about 20 bucks, but what if you're about to record some vocals and your pop filter breaks, or you don't have one and you want to just get one really quickly? Well, you're probably know where I'm going with this one if you've uh, if you've ever played around with this stuff before and that is that you can make your own pop filter <laughs> and yes it requires only a couple of bits of gear one of these so a wire coat hanger so in this case yeah we do want wire hangers and all we do with our wire hanger is stretch it out now I just usually when I'm making these I usually just make it into a square like that I don't bother sort of rounding it off but if you want to get really you know technical you can round it off to make it into a nice round shape so yeah, hopefully you've got a wire coat hanger hanging around. And then uh, I'm not going to ruin any of uh, any of my wife's gear, but if you get some stockings or pantyhose or anything like that, I'll show you over here on the WikiHow article. I'll have a link to this one below because it's not worth me doing it, all the work because there's plenty of places that have these. So you grab your coat hanger, you turn it into a circle like we did, the perfect circle. And then, uh, yeah, you literally just stretch any sort of thin fabric over the top and anything can work in there. Like I say, pantyhose or stockings work best, but all you want is something thin and the point of a pop filter is to stop your popping peas so when you when you say p and and some air comes out that hits the diaphragm of the microphone and that's going to pop your peas so having something to stop it it can be called a windshield too because it's stopping the wind if you're full of hot air like me and you're blowing lots of wind into your microphone, you need yourself a pop filter. And there you go. There is a cheap way to do it. Please ask permission of whomever you are taking the stuff of <laughs> before you do that. Because, uh, yeah, you don't want to come home and say, ah, oh, we're going out to dinner tonight. And I'll let me just put my stockings. What have you done? Yeah. So please be careful. Be respectful of, uh, of folks. Uh, uh, if you're doing that, but it's a, it's a cool way to go. Uh, for the second one, I oh, I do have it handy. I thought I didn't prepare my prop for this. The second one I'm going to show you is this. Yes, it's a roll. It's a it's a roll of stuff. No, this is Velcro one wrap tape. So this stuff. I use for everything. Now, like I said at the top, these are gear hacks. They're all free or cheap. This is a cheap one. So these, this is about $20 a roll, which might think is expensive, but look how much you get. You get like a couple of meters of this stuff. Uh, I did a video on this uh, a while ago. So if you, I will have linked to that down in the description. Let's just bring up. So there's there's a picture of me <laughs> with my messy cables doing it. And this is the whole reason. This is what I, uh, this is what I use. So whenever I have a cable, 
these are my cables now. So they don't look like that anymore. They all look like this because I wrap them up and then all my USB cables or my mic cables or my everything just has these and it's as quick as that. Like that's that's the Velcro cable. That's the wrap there. And then you just wrap it around. It, everything sticks to every bit so you don't need to do anything else. And then that's it. These will change your life because you'll find uses for them everywhere. I've done my whole home theater set up right behind the computer here. Everything's done. All of my cables. I just, yeah, I just use them everywhere. And again, don't don't use those little plastic ones. They're crappy. Um, yeah, don't don't try and tie things. Just yeah, just grab some Velcro. Genuine Velcro brand work the best in my experience. You get a roll of this stuff, the one wrap tape. And again, there's a video link down below, which is uh, that one there, uh, which is where I show how I use them. And there's links to where you can pick them up online as well. Uh, let's uh, go to my next tip, which is uh, keep your boxes, people. <laughs> You might be thinking this is a weird gear gear hack to uh, to put out there, Pete. But I have benefited greatly from keeping the boxes of all of my stuff. So when you buy a piece of gear, don't just chuck the box and the manuals and the packaging away. Keep it because guess what? You're probably going to upgrade or update or find new gear that you want to use in the future. And if you are selling something, which I'm about to do, yes, this UR12 is about to be sold. <gasps> I know. If you're here in Australia, by the way, and you're interested in um, some audio gear before it goes on eBay, uh, hit me up, Pete at studiolivetoday.com. Only in Australia. I only send it in Australia. Sorry, I know. Um, but yeah, international postage is ridiculously expensive. This would cost more to send internationally than it would cost for you to buy it in your own country. I guarantee it. Uh, so yeah, so keep your boxes because if you want to resell your stuff, it looks so much better to have it like that. Like if I if I put this on eBay, uh, it's likely to get me 20, 30% more than if I just had throw everything out of here than if I just had this. So if I'm selling this, it's like, oh, yeah, thanks for that, Pete. But if I say, look, I've got the original CD, I've got all the original documentation, I've got all the original manuals and packaging, people know that it's come from somewhere that's looked after it and it's just better. And when I'm buying stuff, I look for the same thing. I want to make sure I have all the stuff. Related to that, is all the manuals that you get with things. Now, I keep the manuals in the boxes for, for that reason, that they're all kept together. Because as soon as you put a man manual anywhere else, you don't know where it is. So I take the bit of gear out while I'm using the bit of gear, any cables that I need. But as soon as I'm not using it, it goes straight back in the box. So everything like on those shelves behind me, that's all stuff that I've either used or I'm going to sell or I'm storing or whatever. So if you keep all your manuals, and the one thing that I do is I used to do this a lot more before the internet, but I used to scan in all of the manuals that I got as soon as I got them or take a photo of them. Uh, and that was just so that I could have a digital version because even though you know some of these, most of these are now online, having your own digital version of manuals can be super helpful. I did that. I used to, uh, I'm quite a, a video camera enthusiast and I used to do that uh, with old video cameras and I actually put them up online and people that had the same model of old video cameras uh, used to be able to say, oh, cool, I can actually download these. So I'd share the PDF versions of those. Uh, and the other thing you want to keep is, especially anything like this, and I'm covering it up for a reason, but any of your downloads that you get with your gear, make sure you keep your keys and keep them in a safe place too. So they all go back in the box there, ready to go. Let's uh, come to the last couple. Uh, yeah. So another hack, this is completely free. You might've seen this during the week when I was actually singing. It's related to the popping and the pop filter stuff. And that is when you're singing into a microphone, it, the, the temptation is to eat the mic. So to sing like that and to sing right into the microphone. You might've noticed that when I was singing, I was singing here to the side. So I was actually singing because the audio is still going to hit the capsule of the microphone. But the difference is that the wind is not going to hit there. If I do that versus this, you're not hearing any different level of sound. And you'll notice even when I'm doing this, I don't have my microphone like this. If I did my whole show like this, A, it would look weird because my mouth would be behind the microphone the whole time. It might sound a little bit more radio ready, uh, but yeah, you're going to get a lot more plosives, a lot more popping P sounds. So sing above, below to the side of your microphone so that you don't get all those popping plosives. Now, the final one is a bit of fun. We've all been there where you don't have a guitar pick. You're like, oh, oh. I don't. I didn't buy enough picks. Like nowadays, I have boxes of the things. But if you're just like, oh, where's where's my guitar pick? I need to find one, and you don't have one. What I use in that situation is uh, ice cream. <laughs> So I use an ice cream tub. I've found over time that the consistency of the plastic at the bottom of an ice cream tub is about right for the thickness of pick that I want. If I want a thinner pick, I use the lid. 
So yeah, your, your standard plastic, the Peter's original there here in Australia, but wherever you are, your standard ice cream tub, if it's plastic, obviously paper ones or those cardboard ones aren't going to be super good, but I've found that those work really well. Just get some scissors, cut yourself out a pick shape and be good to go. I have tried these things. Uh, yeah, you, your mileage may vary, but I found that it was like really bad. I found that it did not work uh, at all because the edges, when this thing cuts, this is like a pick press. So you push down on it and it cuts out a pick. Like imagine a big pick hole punch, but the jagged edges you get on your picks with these things make them really horrible. They scratch up your skin and your fingers and your guitar strings. They're not a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my my go is go back to, yes, grab the, grab the Peter's ice cream. Yeah, I, ha I had to do it. You know what? I had to do it, Battalion. You know I had to put Peter's ice cream there. And it is the best ice cream here in Australia. Oh, Gold North is pretty good too. But yeah, uh, Jade says, been there, done that with the ice cream. I think we all have at one stage or another. So there you go. There are our uh, there are our life hacks, our guitar, uh, guitar, our gear hacks. Remember, your Velcro, your boxes, scan in your manuals, uh, your, your your ruined coat hangers. Now, I don't, I don't need one of these. I've just actually ruined this coat hanger. Uh, so yeah, they're the things that you want to grab if you are looking to get into uh, some gear hacking going on. And again, links down in the description to all the stuff I just talked about. Let's jump over and uh, take, uh, take a look at what's happening here in the chat. Now, I did see someone that I have to come up to who had, uh, yes, it was pure cringe. So thank you for the donation, uh, the super sticker there. I wanted to say thank you and appreciate you and uh, thank you to everyone uh, i'm always blown away by folks who are provide i had uh, i can't remember who it was now i've sent them an email so thank you someone sent me a donation via paypal through the week uh, and of course my wonderful patreons over at patreon.com slash pete johns uh, you're all awesome people and if you're just here watching the show not even just here but yeah i know there are people that watch almost every video uh, that like that comment that share that subscribe to all of those good youtube things so thank you to you all for that all righty Let's uh, jump in because we've got a bunch of questions that have come in here from the folks who are here live. So uh, let's bring these up here now. I think I saw one from our buddy Case. I did up there in the Netherlands. Uh, says, Case says, question, will you be using CB3, Cubasis 3, for your so te song timber rocker? Case, I am on the fence on this one. I have, I'm a little behind. So I'm needing to get a move on. My original intention was that I would stem out. So I'd export the tracks from GarageBand. I would import them into Cubasis 3 and I would mix in Cubasis 3. I don't think I'm going to have enough time, to be honest, to do that. Given my level of uh, knowledge with Cubasis 3, I don't think it's going to work. So that being said, I've got another song project I'm doing in October, a cover song. So that may be one that I uh, use Cubasis 3 to record, mix and master in. So I might do the full process in October. So short answer to that is probably not, but watch this space. I definitely want to get back to uh, to doing things with the uh, with Cubasis because it's very, very cool. Uh, thank you to Jade Starr doing great moderating duties here. She's dropped a link here if you're watching on the video to uh, the podcast link. So Home Studio Q&A podcast. And if you're listening on the podcast, shout out to you. Love it. Thanks for being here. Uh, Gino says, uh, that's what I did. Use a coat hanger and pantyhose. I still use it. Uh, had it for 15 years. There you go. They last longer as a pop filter than they do on your legs, for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've got some other folks talking about the the same thing uh, of, as, uh, of using those. Um, and yeah, just using the... So Gino says he just used a diamond shape. Yeah, so you can you can bend it. You can do whatever you want. But yeah, what... And again, no one, no one's going to look at your music unless you've got a you know music channel like I do. Uh, no one's going to really care. Um, Jade says uh, she keeps every single box. You should see her garage. Yeah, you should. I've got a cupboard. I've got a box cupboard upstairs. I'm sure my wife thinks I'm insane, but I have an entire box cupboard last year. Uh, and uh, yeah, says I'm so glad I'm going to sell my old e drum kit. Yeah, the only thing that I've got rid of the boxes for is my e drum kit funnily enough, because the boxes were just huge. They were taking up all the space. So there you go. Um, let's see. I think I saw some other questions here. So uh, Jim Sim, hello to you. Says, greetings all. Uh, yeah, keep those boxes. I don't sell stuff. I use the stuff for years and burn them out. Yeah, I've got some stuff too that I've uh, just used for so long uh, that it's, the yeah. That they just get you like my uh, like my old Sennheiser HD 280s. If you saw the video I released yesterday, uh, yeah, my my these are my new Sennheisers, which is why I keep adjusting this cable because the coily cable is so tight at the moment. It's I'm not actually able to get far as far away from my from my mixer, but it'll stretch in the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I forgot my train of thought. Uh, there was a question. 
And now it's scrolled on past. Here it is. It's from uh, Flyboy Tim. Uh, so Flyboy Tim says, my travel setup is super small, light, and compact. Compact. <coughs> I packed the awesome Samson Meteor. It's Meteor for the win. Uh, Mike, should I record in clean mode and alter in GB or record with my voice settings all set up first? This is a great question. Uh, great question, Tim. Um, I've gone both ways. I've, I've swung between the two methods in the past. The way I use at the moment is I find that I sing better when I've got some delay, reverb, and compression on my vocals. So what I normally do when I'm singing these days is add a track. If I'm using GarageBand on my iPhone or iPad, add a track as lead vocals. Uh, turn off any um, any pitch control because that uh, adds a bunch of delay. Uh, so it should be off by default, but just make sure it's off. And then dial in quite a bit of compression. That way it pushes the vocals up front so I can hear my own vocals in my headphones. And then I use quite a lot of reverb and delay. If you saw my uh, vocal recording video during the week, you'd see that I actually have that thing really loud and swimming in reverb and delay. I just find it helps me uh, pitch my vocals a lot better. When I've recorded clean, I just tend to find that my vocals don't cut through and I don't actually hear the vocals well enough over the mix. And therefore I get a bit pitchier with my vocals. So that's my technique. Uh, and remember, if you're recording, if you're using plugins in your DAW, that won't bake them into your sounds at all. You can turn it straight off. You can copy that entire vocal to a clean track afterwards and then rebuild your whole vocal chain exactly how you want to do it. So uh, that's my two cents. But uh, yeah, trial and error, experiment, uh, whatever's going to work. But uh, yeah, I, I always uh, record through effects. I just find it better for me personally. But thank you, Tim, for the question. Uh, Alex Backus, hello to you. Is there a way to use or integrate an external sample or loop within GarageBand iOS with automatic BPM tone adjustment, just like you can for Apple loops? No, I don't believe so. So here's the thing. There are some audio files that have kind of chime stamping. And uh, some people have said to me, oh, I've used these WAV files that I got from this sample pack and I imported them in and they work just like Apple loops. That hasn't been my experience, not to say that it's not true, but it just hasn't been my experience. Now, if you do want to do something like that, there's an app that I use and recommend now. Uh, I think it was Jade Star that put me onto this. It's a very simple app, and yes, it is a paid app. There's a free version, but there's a paid version, and it is this app here called Audio Stretch. <laughs> so it doesn't look like much here at the moment, but what you basically do with Audio Stretch is you import a file. Uh, do I have my... Oh, I don't have my... I don't have my mouse on. Hang on a moment. Hang on. Where's my mouse pointer? There it is. So you import a file. It brings it in here. And you can see down the bottom here, you can adjust the speed and the pitch, and you can adjust them independently. So what you need to do is grab your sample or your loop, bring it here into audio stretch, increase the speed or decrease the speed if you just want it to change, but it will actually maintain the pitch. So the difference between this and changing it in some other apps is that they'll actually increase. So if you use a sampler, for instance, in GarageBand, it'll change the pitch, but it'll change the speed as well. Uh, Audio Stretch does a good job because it can do one without the other. So that's what I use for, for GarageBand. I, like if you use something like Aurea Pro or Cubasis, they have flex time, which means that you can actually stretch things out. So that's probably one of the bigger advantages of using a different DAW as opposed to GarageBand is that you get the ability to use that flex time and actually stretch out your samples. But if you're using GarageBand, uh, Audio Stretch, I think it might be a $10 app for the paid version. It's probably worthwhile getting. Uh, I found it useful. I've had someone, I mentioned this in the video I did about it. They came in to sing a song and they're like, can I sing this a tone higher? Uh, and I'm like, um, not in GarageBand. But right, hold the light a moment. App Store, download Audio Stretch. There you go. <laughs> and it worked a treat. So uh, uh, hopefully that helps you out. Uh, <laughs> so Thomas uh, says uh, that our ice cream containers in the States are flimsy cardboard, though not plastic. Well, that's probably better for the environment. And I think more and more ice cream containers are going uh, paper and, uh, and cardboard based, which is probably, again, better for the environment. Although some of that stuff is not even recyclable anyway, that, um, that uh, sort of film uh, covered. Anyway, this isn't the recycling hour. This is the, uh, <laughs> this is the uh, what are we talking about? Home studio. That's right. Well, let's continue on. I think I saw uh, one or two more questions here, or did I? I think I might have, maybe have covered them. Maybe it's time to jump over. Hello to other folks who are here. Hello to Binny Sandu. Good to have you here on board. Uh, a thousand watts. Barry Tompkinson, g'day to you. I think I've said hello to everyone. Jeff Brush has snuck in. Thank you to everyone for being here. Just scrolling down once again. Uh, if you do have a question, 
and you are here live, I'll go and answer the pre-questions, but all you need to do is put the word question in your comment, and I'll know it's a question, and I'll circle back and answer any questions as the show continues. But for now, why don't we jump on over and take a look at some questions that have come up through the week. So let's go. Number one, uh, here's, a, here's one on the video that I was just talking about, my new headphones. So these ones, the Sennheiser HD, HD 280 Pro new version as opposed to the old version. Uh, so we've got a question here from Mike Mix. Love your videos. Quick question. I want to use some iPad apps like Synth and Vocoder, but want to record them in Logic. Best way to do it? Yeah, so this is a problem. Uh, so the iPad apps that you can use uh, and record your audio. So if you're using, say, a standalone iPad app or even if you're using a, an audio unit plug-in in GarageBand, really the only way to do this is to record it in on your iPad. So let's say that you've got a Logic project or a project on your Mac or your PC in any DAW. What you need to do is say, right, this is in A major and it's at a 120 BPM. What I would normally do is the best thing to do is to, to export your project from Logic. So you want to add a track. Export your project from Logic as a stereo wave file, import it into GarageBand or Cubasis or Aurea, record your track in there, and then export that as a WAV file and then bring that back into Logic. I know it's a little bit fiddly, but I found that this is the best way to do it. So basically export your, your Logic project, play along with that in your app on iPad, and then when you're done and you've recorded it, send it back. You can do things like routing the audio. So if you've got a mixer or an audio interface, you can grab your iPad and then output the audio as stereo audio and record it into your Mac, into Logic. Getting that sync, I've found, can actually be a bit hard because you're dealing with things like latency there and the actual quality of the audio is dependent on what your output is. So if you're just outputting from your headphone jack, it's not going to be the best quality audio and then the input as well so you can't if it's analog remember you're doing digital to analog conversion on the way out and then you're doing analog to digital conversion on the way in so you're converting your audio signal twice so that's why i say in my experience the best way to do something like this is to get your your sounds into your ipad just as a wave file record over them and then send just the track back and reincorporate it back into your project uh, that's my experience anyway hopefully that helps you out a uh, question here from Kadeja says, uh, please, can you tell me, uh, please tell me, do you do Skype? I think, I don't think this was a question I meant to put in here. Please tell me, do you, you do Skype consultations? Uh, so yes, <laughs> I do. So I do offer coaching services. So anyone who is interested uh, in contacting me or any one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, you need to just email me, pete at studiolivetoday.com. Uh, so I do do some mixing and mastering services and I do have some coaching students who I I work with one-on-one. -on -one. So if you want to pick my brain directly uh, about uh, using GarageBand, about home recording, any of that sort of thing, you can do it. Just uh, email me for details. Question here about releasing music. Uh, this is a video I did about Amuse. So Amuse are a free distributor. I use Amuse. I also use DistroKid. DistroKid are my preferred distributor, and that's why I distribute all of my music, my Pink John's music. Uh, but Amuse are a free distributor, and that's who I use to distribute Fear Cut, my other band, my fictional punk rock band, who may or may not have another song coming soon. Just quietly. Uh, is it free? Uh, it's free to create an Amuse account or I need to pay. So there are two levels with Amuse. There's Amuse Free, which is free, and then there's Amuse Pro, which is a subscription service. So the free service lets you release one release at a time. Uh, you can only release one every 30 days because it takes 30 days to actually get the whole release process done and out there. And there's a few other limitations, like you don't uh, get YouTube content ID anymore. You used to. You don't get YouTube content ID. It doesn't go to Instagram. Uh, there's a few other things that you don't get to do with the free version. So if you are just starting out, though, it is a great way because you still get to keep 100% of the royalties you earn through Amuse. Uh, but yeah, you don't uh, you, you don't get a lot of the features you get with DistroKid. So the lyrics ability, the synced lyrics, a lot of the customization features and the speed as, as say is slower. So if I'm going to pay for something right now, my preference is DistroKid. $19.99 per year, unlimited song releases. Link in the description for 7% discount if you do want to use it. I didn't realize I'd turn this into an advertisement, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> Distro Kid, um, yeah, 20 bucks a year and you can release unlimited. So if you are looking for a free option though, oh, <laughs> Amuse is pretty darn good. So uh, I do recommend it as well if you want to get started. <clears throat> question here. Uh, I did a video about how to trim loops in GarageBand iOS. And the question from Climbers of Ice is, I want to be able to drag a recording to a precise place and I can't. It only allows me to move it to fixed spaces. I don't know if you know what I mean. 
I know exactly what you mean. And uh, this actually is probably going to become a, a, a video in itself. In fact, this might be tomorrow's tip. So uh, in GarageBand Weekly. In fact, I'm going to make it tomorrow's tip. I'm going to show you quickly now here anyway, uh, because uh, we have a little bit of time. So let's come over here and let's go into GarageBand. I'll go into my current version, which is version 12 of my song, Timber Song. If we bring it up over here. Here it is. Yes, I'm using AirPlay. That doesn't matter. We won't need to actually play audio here right now. So... I imagine what you're talking about is if you're trying to move something to a certain part of the track, like say there was a little bit of lag on this guitar and I was trying to move it just forward a little bit, you grab it and you move it, it's going to snap onto that grid, yeah? So it's only going to go to like every half a bar. Well, here's the thing. Uh, actually, let's just undo that. All right. <laughs> I, I just moved it. I'm going to come back to this and go, what the heck did I do? Why is my guitar out of sync now? Uh, so, because yeah, you can see there that I have it there and not there so what you can actually do you've seen what i did there but if you grab your two fingers and you spread them apart uh you can actually zoom all the way in and then if you keep zooming see this little thing at the top here that says snap to grid is off that is the key thing because with snap to grid off i don't know why i'm using the project i'm working on right now but with snap to grid off what you can do is move it completely free form so you see if we're in here look at this now you can put it anywhere. So this is great if you need to like, like say this was the very first note. I'm going to totally ruin this. Very first note. You can actually put the transient so it's right there on bar 47. You can even put your, your, your marker there to just line it right up. Boom. And there you go. So you can only do that by zooming so far in that your snap to grid is uh, off. So yeah, that's how you do it. Now let's undo this. Oh God. <laughs> undo, undo, undo. All right. I've undone everything. It's back in the right spot. Yep. Oh, if I've ruined my lead guitar of my uh, of my project, that would be sad. But that, that's all you need to do. So there's no actual setting for Snap to Grid, but if you just zoom in to the absolute last zoom point, then it'll take Snap to Grid off and then you'll be good to go. So hopefully that helps you with that question. Um, where was that? Oh, it's over here. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so that was the, the the trimming of the loop. So yeah, if you're trying to line things up and you're finding that that grid is annoying you, you want to go off off the grid, you can go off the grid by taking a snap to grid off. Let's uh, go to our next question, shall we? This was about a about audio interfaces. Uh, so Tengram, hello to you, says, uh, thought of buying a Focusrite Solo second gen. Will it be compatible with iPad? Please, I need help. It sure will be. So when it comes down to audio interfaces, and we've been talking about these, uh, I showed you my my original OG. I'm, I'm so sad that I'm going to get rid of this, but I just have to do it. It's, it. it's actually not it's not fair on it that it's just sitting there in my cupboard not getting used. So it needs to go to someone who's going to put it to use. But yeah, it was the first interface I used to record my first EP in GarageBand. So I'm getting cold feet about whether I uh, whether I get rid of it. And it's so solid. Love this thing so much. Anyway, um, yes, you can. So uh, what it comes down to with interfaces and iOS is whether they are what is called class compliant. So class compliant just means that it can run without drivers and it can connect up therefore to your iPhone and your iPad because you can't install drivers on your iPhone or iPad. So uh, it could be called driverless or driver free mode or class compliant mode. You'll be able to find out. The problem is that not, especially your older interfaces, not every interface manufacturer made it super clear which ones were class compliant and which ones weren't. But anything made in the last five years, especially, and pretty much the last 10 years, is going to be class compliant. They realize that a lot of people use iPhones and iPads to record now. It's becoming more and more popular every year. So it's in their best interest to do that. Now, keep in mind, there's a couple of things that you need if you're hooking up a Focusrite Scarlet interface. You will need a genuine Apple Lightning to USB 3 adapter. Say it with me, folks, uh, because the non-genuine versions are flaky at best and straight out don't work at worst. And especially as, as Apple start updating iOS versions, they tend to stop working. So so buy the genuine Apple Lightning adapter. If you've got an iPad Pro with a USB-C, then you can use pretty much any adapter. You don't need the genuine stuff there. And you'll also need a power supply. So what I recommend is a powered USB hub. I use the Tendac powered USB hub, which is the one that uh, I find the best value and the best bang for your buck. And uh, there are links to those and all the things that I recommend over at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. That's my gear guide where you can find out all of the things that I use in the home studio and recommend. So yes, you can, but if you're using it with your iPhone or iPad, get yourself the genuine Apple lightning adapter and a powered USB hub and you'll be good to go for life. That will just let you plug 
anything class compliant, microphones, keyboards, MIDI keyboards, mouses, whatever you want. Uh, that's the beautiful, beautiful part of having a powered USB hub hooked up to your iPhone or iPad. So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, speaking of iPhones and iPad, question here from Joanne uh, says, if I format an external hard drive to XFAT and download photos of my iPhone directly to it using a Lightning to USB 3 cable, will I be able to access the photos on the external hard drive later through File Manager, Windows 10 on my PC? And thanks for your video, very informative. Yeah, 100%. So I've done a few videos like this about using hard drives and flash drives with your iPhone or iPad. So again, if you have that Lightning to USB 3 adapter, you can use your card readers, your flash drives, your USB hard drives with your iPhone or iPad. And when you plug them in, they'll pop up in your files app as a as external storage device. You copy your files to and from them, and then you unplug them. And then yes, it, because they're going to be uh, an XFAT, uh, an FAT uh, standard, then you can use those with pretty much anything with your PCs and your Macs and your other devices. So the only challenge there is you need to make sure your drives are not formatted for Windows. So NTFS is Microsoft's proprietary file format that won't work with iOS. So if you've got an external hard drive, you're plugging it in, it's not working, it's one of two things. It's either you don't have enough power, so you need the external lightning plug to plug in on your USB 3 adapter, or it's formatted in the wrong format. So unfortunately, the only way to fix that is to for reformat the drive, which will delete all data. So you'll need to plug it into your Mac or your PC, copy all the files off, reformat the drive as XFAT, copy the files back on, and plug back in. I know, pain in the butt, but what can you do? Uh, it's just what you need to do to get the job done. Let's see if we've got any other questions. I think I've got one more. No, I've got two more questions here. Let's jump through these last two and then we'll finish off with the folks here live and see if we have any final questions. So a question here from John Usher says, hi Pete, random question. I recently bought an iPad Pro which doesn't have a standard headphone jack. I've been using an iRig with my iPad. Any idea what I could use to connect my guitar? I do. So. The easiest solution for you is to buy one of these, John. And this is the USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So that is your best bet to pick up one of these. They're about $15 here in Australia. That means they're probably $10 in the US. And if you're using an iRig that uses the three and a half mil jack, this will just convert that to the USB-C. Now, not going to give you the best quality. So not really my preferred option. I would upgrade to something that uses a digital connection. Uh, longer term, you'll probably want the quality of something with a digital connection. So the beautiful part about having an iPad, which is I can't show you because I'm displaying it on here now, uh, is that it's USB-C. So you can just plug in anything. And because the iPad Pro has quite a lot of power, something like this, the Steinberg UR20, UR12, can just plug in via a, a, a USB A to B cable, and then you'll just need a converter to convert the USB A to USB C. And those are super cheap, like you know, a few dollars on Amazon or eBay to convert your USB, regular USB signal from any USB device to USB C. Uh, so you can do that. You can still use the USB powered hub if you want some additional uh, power and the ability to plug in more stuff. And once again, I'll give you the same advice. Head over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. I also like the iRig HD series, which is uh, USB based. And also the iRig Pro IO is what I actually use and what I use to record guitars on my latest song uh, or some of the guitars. I use the, uh, the, the, the new box. I can't remember the name of that now. It's so cool. I can't remember the name of it. That's, that's disgraceful. Uh, but yes, uh, I use the iRig Pro IO quite a lot as well. So there's a couple of, options for you there, John. Final question here from folks through the week. A very audio interface uh, centric show this week. Says, hi Pete, thanks for the tutorial. I tried it with my Steinberg UR22 Mark II and an iPad Pro, but when I connect it, there's a delay and distortion and audio bumps as if there were some drivers missing. Maybe the latency settings? Do you know what the reason could be? Thanks. So if you're having, I've actually appointed uh, piano stuff here to uh, a video that I did about USB audio interface errors. So there are some errors that do pop up. I'll just see if I can find the video real quick. Uh, I reckon if I talk, type, oh, I am, I'm still displaying. <laughs> uh, if I do type in audio interface errors, there you go. 
Pete John's audio interface errors. Yeah, there you go. So it's this top one here. So it's uh, how to fix uh, errors with USB audio interfaces. So what it generally comes down to is one of two things. It's usually either that you're not using a genuine adapter. So there's some sort of problem with the adapter that's causing latency or causing clicks and pops and distortion, or it's a power related issue. They're the two main culprits. So with the power stuff, uh, if you're using a Steinberg, then you've got the, the added bonus of having the two different power supply options. So you can bust power it or you can power it separately so i definitely try powering it separately i actually had uh, i had a viewer uh, one of my patrons who was having a similar issue with their steinberg ui22 mark ii so it's obviously a common thing uh, and we we troubleshooted it uh, so we had a we had a, a quick google meet call and we troubleshooted it and uh, all they did was instead of trying to bus power it using the usb slot here they powered it using a portable battery and it fixed it perfect audio no clicking, no popping, no distortion straight away. So sometimes I think it's just the power supply uh, in these things that you just change up. And if you've got nice, clean power, not coming from a PowerPoint and not coming from your device, then no interference can be caused. And the therefore, the data cable is used just for data as opposed to data and power. And that can really help out. So hopefully that helps you and anyone else having similar problems uh thank you once again to the folks who are here live thank you alex Backus, who has uh, thrown a super sticker there uh here in youtube uh thank you again uh, as i said at the start of the show i do appreciate uh all of the folks who support me here on the channel and uh who donate to the channel it does make a big difference i, I mentioned it recently but the reason i could buy these new sennheiser hd 280s to replace my old worn ones that were five years old and starting to show some signs of aging uh was that my paint Trons contribute. It was uh, one month worth of Patreon patron contributions, and that completely funded these headphones. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. But once again, thank you so much for uh, for your support. If you're watching the show, if you're sharing the sharing these videos, uh, if you're supporting, if you're subscribing, thank you very much to that. Uh, let's see if we've got any final question here. Uh, if you do have a question, by the way, pop the word question in front of it and uh, I'll make sure I get back to it if I can. Um, do, do, do. I'll, I'll, I'll go through these couple here. So to Sean says, hey, not much of a gear question, but how do you overcome nervous when recording vocals? I feel like others are judging that hear me. This is, I've covered this a couple of times around vocal recording and it's one of the toughest things. You are not alone by any stretch. I think pretty much everyone that's ever recorded vocals. I've, I think I said in a recent time, if you don't have nerves or if you don't have self-doubt, uh, then you're probably a sociopath. So having nerves and having self-doubt are actually good things because that means you're a, a kind, considerate human being. So what could you do about those? Well, it really comes down to your comfort zone. What I recommend is try and find a quiet space where nobody's around and just sing yourself and practice yourself in a comfortable zone. Because yeah, if you, if you are feeling that others will be judging or others are listening in and you don't want them to, uh, wait till everyone leaves the house, find a quiet time. I know that's hard at the moment in the current environment and then sing like nobody's watching because they aren't. Because the, the thing is, it's this weird vicious circle right it's if you're nervous singing that comes through in your voice if you don't just let go and give a hundred percent it's going to be really obvious in your vocals that you're not giving it a hundred percent so that could actually make it sound worse which makes you more nervous because then you're worried about how your vocals are sounding whereas if you absolutely belt it out and you give it a hundred percent your vocals will sound better and then you'll probably start feeling less nervous. Your confidence will go from here and it will expand out. So I guess instead of saying, oh no, I have to just go and sing in public like tomorrow, start small and then just build out your comfort zone over time. And the important thing is that, yeah, you do need to just let go and sing like nobody is watching and listening, uh, <laughs> which they are, but uh, that's uh, that's my uh, that's my two cents on that one. But yeah, there's other videos here. Check out my vocal recording video from during the week where you saw me absolutely make a fool of myself. But yeah, uh, it, the vocals sound much better when you just go for it. That's uh, that's my uh, my view there. Uh, question here from uh, oh, oh he is yes question. Can we still get uh, flagged on Facebook if we use copyright music, but we don't post the live on our feed after? Would that work? So yeah, so Facebook changes from the first of October. Uh, well, it's not actually changes. So they've really just reinforced what they were using already, but it looks like they may start becoming a bit more aggressive when it comes to protecting copyrighted music. So I think that 
there's not really going to be a way around it for using copyrighted music. I would lean towards trying to use music that is not copyrighted, your own music or royalty free music. YouTube have their music library you can use. Facebook have a music library of, of non-copyright music. So unless you have a really good reason why you need to use copyrighted music, I would just steer completely over that. I would steer away from that as well. Um, so uh, Jade, by the way, if you're watching here live or if you're watching on the replay, Jade, Jade is going live in 15 minutes interviewing uh, the amazingly talented Yale Aiden about her music. Come and join her. So yes, head over to Jade Stars channel if you are watching there. And if you are listening on the podcast, uh, yeah, go to Jade Stars channel and subscribe and uh, catch up on the replays as well, uh, as I will be doing. So uh, yeah, thank you, Jade, for moderating the chat here and for uh, doing all the things. Let's continue. Uh, we'll just see if we've got any final questions. I'm going to scroll back up on up and uh, see if any, I'm looking for the word question. It's your last chance here. Uh, <laughs> Medallion58 says, who had genuine Apple lightning adapter on their bingo card? It's really funny actually, Medallion, because uh, on my phone, I, I use text replacement. So as you probably know, if you've been on the channel, I respond to basically every comment, every comment I physically can, I'll respond to because I'm a crazy person apparently. Uh, but I use text replacement and the text replacement for LTU on my phone is now genuine Apple lightning to USB three adapter because I type it so many times because I get so many questions. Now I just go, uh, you may need to get a LTU. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, if you uh, do have that on your bingo card, I say it in almost every episode. Uh, thank you. Thank you to Jade. Uh, yes, good good, good point. Thank you for doing that. The The links at my gear guide at studiolivetoday.com slash gear are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, you don't pay any more, but they break off a small chunk and send it my way. So you will be getting cool new gear and supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, great, uh, great tip from Alex too. Uh, Tendak is a toller in the EU and the UK. Yeah. So if you go over to the gear guide, let me just show you here because I think if my if my links are set up properly uh, because yeah it's super important to get a good powered USB hub and the Tendak one here in Australia in the US is uh, Atola and I think it's Orcru is another brand they're all made in the same factory they're just badged slightly differently uh, but if we come here here's my gear guide so my studio gear guide there's the links to all the places here's my current setup as of September 2020 and if we come down here to USB hub USB oh, no it's powered Powered USB hub. So there it is, the Tendac powered USB hub. If we go to the US version, it is here. Uh, out of stock. Oh, no, it's in stock. There you go. 20 bucks, $19.99. So there you go. You can pick one of those up if you're in the US. Let's roll the dice on the UK <clears throat> and see if I've linked to the right one. Yeah, or crew. So it's or crew, Atola, or Tendac. But as you can see there, it's just a slightly different plug and just different branding on there. Everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, and they're £19.99. So there you go. For 20 quid, 20 bucks, and I think it might be 30 Australian dollars. Let's just check since we're here. For my Australian friends, the Tendac here in Australia, I think is... Oh, I'm so sorry. <coughs> it is out of stock. It comes in and out of stock at various different times. So it is out of stock at the moment, uh, but hopefully it will come back into stock soon if you are here in Australia and you need yourself a powered hub. One last check for questions and then I'm going to Scarpa. And uh, I think we have one here from Gino Therese. Uh, Gino says that your comping vocals video I've yet to watch, but my question is, is it necessary or is it better to get a good pass per section, like a complete verse then uh, is, is, or uh, is comping common? Yeah, so it's interesting. Uh, comping is something that I do sometimes. If you're not sure what comping is, it means you record a bunch of takes and then you clip out the best parts of each take and bring them together into one overall take. The other option is what Gino is saying, which is either you just sing a bunch of takes all the way through and you pick the best one or you pick the best chorus, the best verse, the best this bit. Uh, when you look at my comping video, you'll see that I didn't actually use much from a few different ones. So most of it was in bigger chunks. So it's not like I went in every word and every phrase because that's just a, that's, that's a diminishing returns thing. You're not going to get enough value out of doing that in my opinion. So what I did is pick the best vocal take, use that. And then as, anytime I heard vocals that I didn't like in that take, I went and auditioned the others and brought in a different one. So that's the way I do it. Some people listen to every different take for every different word. I would find that tedious. I would go insane doing that. So that's my my experience anyway. That's uh, that's what I do there. 
Righty dokey, I think we are going to finish up here. Yep, I don't see any other questions here. If you do have a question that I missed, I apologize, but here's what you can do. You can jump down into the comments after the show and you can add your question there. As I've mentioned already, I'm always down there in the comments answering questions for folks. So please do that. Thanks again. Uh, thanks to Martin uh, I've, for, for letting me know that the podcast wasn't being updated. It now is. It's up to date. So this episode will drop on the audio podcast tomorrow, I promise, but all 45 other episodes are right there on the podcast. If you go to your favorite podcasting platform and search for Home Studio Q&A, you'll find me there. What's coming up today? Well, uh, we have ho uh, happy hour. We have the uh, happy hour. It's going to be some originals today. So I'm doing a, a, a be cool a retrospective of the releases I've put out over the last uh, five years. So we're going to go back in time and play a couple of tunes from each of my songs. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to catch up with that and, uh, and hear some of the old classics and some of the newer songs, then uh, hopefully you can join me there on the happy hour. And of course, Garage Band Weekly is tomorrow at this very time on this very channel. So if you're a GarageBand user, you won't want to miss that. We'll be talking about the fallout from iOS 14. Ooh. Thanks again, folks. I uh, hope you uh, have a great weekend of creating and I will catch you soon. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others.